You may recognize Justin Wren from season 10 of The Ultimate Fighter on the Spike TV network. But this MMA boxer with a promising career was fighting a battle on the inside. I just always remember fighting depression and just not being fulfilled. In his book, Fight for the Forgotten, Justin reveals how he was able to put his life back together, and why he's now fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. Joining us now is Justin Wren. Justin, great to have you here. Thank you so much. Your mindset before you knew Jesus was just so different than it is today. So you're moving along, you finally find your place in the fighting world, and then you have an encounter with Jesus Christ that radically changes you, and you leave all of that fighting that you worked so hard for, for mission work, for yeah. mi and, and not just mission work, I mean mission work in the Congo. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy, I, I guess I stepped out at 23 years old and on a winning streak. Um, and I decided to leave because, I mean, God just rocked me and uh, had a bigger, better, more rewarding fight. That actually means something. And so uh, I, I just wanted to pursue that. And so wow. it didn't seem like a sacrifice really that much. I mean, it did to other people. I was called I was a- I say, what was the reaction of yeah, your was, family and friends? I was friends, called like... a waste of talent and, uh, <laughs> and that I was, you know, I would always regret, you know, stepping out of fighting. and. Mm -hmm. Um, and these people could always help. You could help them so much more if you just yeah. build a platform here. And we don't need a platform. I mean, our platform yeah. is Jesus. It's God. And so yeah. um, I, I just I just love that he will use us despite ourselves. And even if we think we, because yeah. I, I know going to Congo with the pygmies, I thought I was way too small. The problem was way too big. What am I going to do about it? Yeah, you were right. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Without you were way too small, and right. the problem was way yeah, too big. But with God. Yeah, but with God, God. Yes, um, exactly. Anything can happen. Fight for the Forgotten is the title of your book, and you share uh, so much about your experience of making this decision and then actually going and yeah. letting God build it into your life, because that's really what happened. But um, I looked at it. One of the things that amazed me was that that line that we keep seeing through everyone's life, every one of us, is that God takes our shortcomings, He takes mm. our woundings, He takes yeah. our history, and He turns it into something that matters. All that bullying, all the things that happened to you as a young person, played out in your feelings so connected to the pygmies. Many people are unfamiliar with pygmies, yeah. but they're really a lost group yeah. of people. Yeah, absolutely, and I would say, yeah, sitting at the lunch table by myself, that uh, you know, getting pelted in the back of that with chocolate milk spit wads, I felt kind of forgotten. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really able to connect with them when they call themselves the forgotten. I can't compare um, because right. their suffering is so much greater than anything yeah. I could ever imagine. And so that's why I feel like God said, go, um, live with them. Yeah. And when you're living with them, you can listen to them and you can learn from them. And from that, I'll show you how to love them. And, so. and you know, when you say he'll show you how to do what he calls you to, he really did that with yeah. you. I mean, you were not, it's not like you grew up as a Boy Scout camper. No. I mean, I'm reading your story and I'm thinking, yeah, that God would have to do something in my life to make that okay yeah. too, because life is rough there. But mm -hmm. it, it became, you were drawn to it. Oh, like yeah. it, you found out you were actually good at it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, I had no experience drilling water wells or making land purchases or community development. I didn't have a degree in that at all. I had no experience, but God along the way provided the exact perfect right team, guys that are my heroes, a guy that's a father figure to me and another that's a brother to me. And we go in the forest and we live out there with them and, and we sleep in the twig and leaf huts and we sleep on the dirt and it gets, we get rained on and it turns to mud or there's roaches in there and snakes and other crazy stuff, close calls with black mambas, like crazy stuff going on. But, but, but God is with us through it all. And is making the, the water wells happen and the land purchases happen. And so there's been so much more actually done mm -hmm. um, than I could have ever hoped for. Is that the primary need to have a place to belong that's Ooh. their own and to have yeah. clean drinking water? Yeah, if you think about it, land, water, and food are yeah. so much, uh, basic. they're just basic, yeah. you know? If, if you have water, but a water well, but you don't own the land, then you can be pushed yeah. off of it, you can't use it. Or, Which is really you know, what happened to them right, as a exactly. people. Right, exactly. And they were, you know, they've been enslaved in the Congo. A lot of people don't know slavery still exists today, that there's an estimated 27 million slaves on planet Earth, where the 5,000 children each and every day die because yeah. of dirty water. All of us know about the Kardashians, all of us know about Ebola, and this is a hundred times worse than Ebola every single year. Yeah. It's not two Twin Towers coming down every day, it's four yeah. of a daycare. 
And, and, and so it's just great. And that was my, you know, one of my first things that gripped my heart was a little boy named Andy Bo. And uh, he passed away just because of dirty water. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, you know what, if I can go to a faucet and, and with the turn of a, a you know, handle, I, I, water comes out. And I, like I should, if I could, and I don't mean to be crude, but if I can use the restroom yes. and, and, and clean water and, and they're dying because they don't have it, like I know God's so good that he will show me how I can help them get clean water. Yeah. I know it. And so he's done that. And, and we've trained up 18 people in the Congo that are full-time staff that have degrees from a Christian college, uh, how to do community development. And we just put the tools in their hands and they've already been trained up through school. And then we teach them exactly how to drill the water wells in a safe, you know, yeah. clean uh, way. And then we're able to go out there and it changes things. That going and living with and engaging in day-to-day -day life yeah. is really what makes you trustworthy to them because they have been so abused and misused and stepped on. Yeah. I mean, I would think for an outsider to come in would be very difficult. Yeah. I would say, yeah, they, they have to know that you love them um, to receive you well or to listen That's to you as well. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I think that we in the West or a lot of NGOs or uh, you know, we go about it in such the wrong way. Mm -hmm. We want to just throw money at the problem a quick Band-Aid fix or we want to, you know, walk into the village with a parade and have a party yeah. and get a bunch of pictures. And then to me, that's not for them. That's yeah. for us. Yes. And, and how can we do it? And, and how can we do it really for him and for them? So are and, uh, you going back into fighting? <laughs> yeah, I, I have, um, which was kind of crazy. It took a five-year break. I fought on Spike TV August 28th and looking to book my next fight now. Wow. Um, and I know that sounds nuts. And I, I, I honestly said I would probably never fight again. Um, but I feel like God's using it as a way to be a light in another dark place. Maybe to or, bring people to read exactly, for the forgotten. Exactly, and yeah. to see what's going on in the Congo, to see his goodness, to see, yeah. to fall in love with these people who don't have a voice. Yeah. You know, I get to give them a voice and a platform that millions of people watch. Yeah. Um, and maybe to fall in love with the idea of taking something that you do well and mm. using it for something bigger good. than yourself. Right, yeah. exactly. It's all good. Life's not about us. It really yeah. isn't, is it? Fight for the Forgotten. It's the name of Justin's book. It's all about his fascinating journey into the Congo and with the pygmy people there. It's available wherever books are sold. If you're looking for an inspiring gift for your family or friends for the holiday, this is the one to get. Go out there. Thank you so much. You. Great to have you with us I today. I really appreciate it.